I'd love to talk about your move to Baltimore. So everybody, of course, knows the story. You, you took over for Cal Ripken Jr. at shortstop. But I want to know about like the behind the scenes, like the leading up to that. So you signed there as a free agent. Uh, like what, ha- what were the conversations like that off season? Like, did you know that Ripken was going to get shifted over to third? Like take me through like the behind the scenes stuff before that. <laughs> man, that was some intense times, man. The first time I'd ever been a free agent. Historically, the Oakland A's didn't bring back and they still don't bring back their yeah. free agents. You know, they didn't like to resign guys. Uh, and the, and the Oakland A's had kind of gone through transition time. Tony La Russa went to St. Louis, McGuire went to St. Louis, Steinbach went up to Minnesota. So I think I was looking to transition as well. The A's hadn't, didn't really show much interest in bringing me back. As a matter of fact, they never even talked about contracts because they had uh, Miguel Tejada was coming up. So <laughs> who needed me, right? Anyway, so I got a call from uh, uh, Hall of Fame general manager, Pat Gillick. And Pat Gillick, was just an incredible guy that was just open and honest with me. And uh, he said, listen, this is a situation where it's going to happen probably with or without you. We think that you are the right guy to come in and fill his shoes. And, you know, after, you know, some soul searching and, and thinking if this was going to be the right thing, you know, we wanted to come back to the East coast. Anyway, my wife, was born and raised in Maine. All our family was back here on the East Coast. And how about this? The Baltimore Orioles just went to the postseason in 96. They were, in my mind, they looked like the team that was going to be the next dynasty. I just came from a nice little mini dynasty with the Oakland A's where the bar was so high that it just made my game so much better. And I needed that. I needed to get back. I needed that feel of we're playing for a ring today. You know, some of those later teams, I'm not saying I didn't take the field to play to win a championship, but I, you know, we just didn't have enough. And I think players know when they do and when they don't. And when I got to Baltimore, I felt like we were going to win the world series for the next five years. We had Cal at third, Robbie Alomar at second, Paul Merrill at first, Brady Anderson in center, Eric Davis in left, BJ Surhoff was out there, uh, Chris Hoyles, I mean, just loaded. Mike Mussina on the bump, Scott Erickson, Jimmy Key, are you kidding me? And then Randy Myers sets a record for most saves. We walked through, walked through that year. We were wire to wire. Man, all I could see in my mind was us hoisting the trophy. And I didn't even have a good year. I put way too much pressure on myself. I think first two months of the season, I was hitting like 150. People were throwing stuff at me in the stands. You know, it it was crazy. But I started to turn it around. Thank God. Sam Perlazzo one day after like first month and a half, he goes, what is wrong with you anyway? I'm what do you mean, Sam? What do you mean? I don't know. I just replaced Cal Ripken. I got people throwing things at me and stuff. He goes, buddy, you got to relax, man. You have got to relax. I did. And uh, somehow I did, you know, I think I kind of reverted back to the mental training skills and uh, I ended up settling in and, and, and playing pretty well down the stretch. And uh, I felt so good about that team and I felt good about going into 98 um, and even 99. I just thought we were so loaded that we, we just should have done much better after that. But uh Yeah, that's the story about coming over to Baltimore. Cal was awesome every step of the way. I did ask, and I know you're thinking about this, I did ask to talk to Cal. And uh, Cal was nice enough to say, yeah, I'll talk to him. And he basically told me, he said, you know, you got to do what's right for your family. And uh, I feel like I did. You know, we've lived in Baltimore now for over 20 years. My kids are, uh, three of my kids are working here in Baltimore. They live here. So, you know, we love this community. Um, we think it's a great baseball city, and we think there are incredible people here in Baltimore, and, and uh, we'll be here the rest of our lives. Wow. Yeah, you, you read my mind. I wanted to know about what Cal Lake was during the transition there because, you know, I think so much of the time, or at least the, you know, the opinion might be like when guys are shortstops, they're like they take a lot of pride in playing shortstop. Like, you know, that's probably one of the most prideful positions that, and on the field. And they probably don't want to move to a different position, but it sounds like he was, you know, pretty gracious about the whole thing. Well, Cal was incredibly gracious. And uh, as a matter of fact, he helped me so much. He played catch with me every day. Every day he played catch with me. And every day we talked 
baseball. We talked about our pitchers' tendencies. We talked about positioning. We talked just about everything. Cal always stayed after the game late. And there were many nights he and I would be showering at like one in the morning, just talking shop, man. He, I, I loved him so much playing with him and just watching his professionalism on the baseball field as a, as a baseball player, but how he treated people, how he handled fans. It was just mind blowing at the end of his run. He would wait in stadiums and sign for everybody. And there were lines that went outside stadiums. Unbelievable. And uh, I know everybody hears the stories and I'm here to tell you it's all true and it's all great. 